name is Manuel Gavarre. I'm a lawyer and also I do research about corruption and housing. I collaborate with the Observatory Against Economical Crime. And in this presentation, I mean, will try to explain how Wall Street has become the landlord of the city of Barcelona. We are going to explain it from different points of view. From the top, it is the legal international framework to the bottom, the revolving doors of the directors and politicians who are behind this situation. We are going to start with some sociological data of the city of Barcelona. In the last five years, rents have increased in percentages that overcome the 50% in the city, exactly the 56%. In this period, rent prices have risen 30 times faster than wages. And since 2012, investors from Wall Street have heavily entered into residential property in the city. In Barcelona, there are 770,000 units, and tenants, just some the 38% of the population, ownership represent the 43%, and mortgage ownership the 18%. The percentage of tenants has been increasing very heavily since 2011. In 2011, it was, it was just the 30%, and six years after, it was the 38%. Why? Because up to the Lehman Brothers collapse and the subprime crisis, Spanish financiers widely consider mortgages through commercial banks as the best way to profit from housing. However, the model which arose after the financial crisis is based on low salaries and job insecurity, so the risk of unpaid mortgages has increased. In order to avoid this risk, politicians and financiers have chosen a housing model based increasingly on rents and investment funds instead of traditional banks and mortgages. The Barcelona housing stock for rent is composed by 234,000 units, and the 25% of them belong to legal entities. This proportion has been increasing very quickly since 2012. Why? Because the main Barcelonian banks went into failure or were forced to sell its real estate assets to Wall Street investment funds. It was the case of Caixa Catalunya, a former semi-public bank which entered into failure and its assets were acquired by Blackstone and Cerberus between 2015 and 2019, the operation Divide that we are going to analyze in the end of this presentation. And the second bank, the Bank Sabadell, had to sell its assets to Cerberus in 2019 and the real estate of the main bank were also sold to a Wall Street investment fund, in this case, Lone Star. And in Barcelona, there are just only 9,000 units for social rent regime, but there are 143 applicants for social units. But why there are so few units? Because the social rent regime was developed in Europe after the Second World War to overcome the socialist countries. It was uh, financed by redistributing the national income by means of progressive fiscal programs. And the model was an economy based on consumerism where basic needs, such as housing, were widely provided by the state, the welfare state. In this sense, the top marginate the marginal tax rate applied to the highest income average the 80% between 1932 and 1998 in the United States or Britain, and the 60%, around the 60% in France or the United Kingdom. In that period in Spain, it was the 0% because Spain was suffering a dictatorship and a facing regime after the Civil War. So there was an income taxation and progressive taxation. But now we are in a vicious cycle because profit from, from consumption have started to decrease because of inequality. And at the same time, there are huge fortunes hidden in tax havens such as the British Crown Dependencies or the Canaan of Netherlands. This money is frequently invested through investment funds in basic needs, which cannot be avoided, such as water, health or housing. And the legal framework is uh, defined in the Bank of International Settlements. 
This bank is a bank for central banks, and it was created for other purposes, which was to facilitate the reparation of the First World War imposed on Germany, but it has managed to adapt to changing conditions as the abandonment of the gold standard by US in 1971. It increased dramatically the risk of, of, of a bank failure and the financial risk. So in 1974, it was created the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, which is composed by 45 countries. The main countries of the world are members of this Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. And we have to stop a moment to explain the, the framework, the economic framework. Um, Basel III was a response to the political power, the, to the subprime crisis and the financial collapse of 2008, and its goal was reducing the likelihood of a bank failing. But money flows through two different channels. The first channel is subjected to regulation, public control and taxation. And the second channel, the money that flows through the second channel, avoids taxation, regulation and public control because it operates in a hidden way. There is no public control of risk. It is called the shadow banking. And Basel just imposed a regulatory framework to the first channel, the commercial banks, but does not oversight the shadow channel. In this way, Basel has reassured the structure of the economy through two channels. When the first channel is linked to national control, the money of the second channel operates in a global way and its owners are able to choose the most favorable jurisdiction. These jurisdictions are the tax havens, which are the cornerstone of the shadow channel. Nevertheless, both economic flows converge at some point and entities of both channels are strongly connected. But how Basel III, the agreements of Basel III, how intended to reduce the probability of a bank, fa of a bank failure? They try to, to reduce this probability, increasing the capital of the banks. The capital of the banks was increased to the 8% of the risk assumed by the bank. And above all, Basel III allows the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision to actually oversight the commercial banks and the central banks across the world. So, the bank with problems such as the banks of the periphery countries, such as Spain, Portugal, or Ireland, were oversight by the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. And if they fail to fulfill the capital requirement, they should acquire more capital or being dissolved or merged with other banks. These regulations were implemented in Europe through directives and regulations, the Basel III. And in the bailout of Spain, a loan of 100 billion was given to Spanish Spanish financial system under some conditions. The, the European Union put some conditions, such as rolling out a red carpet for the investment funds. Here we see exemption of company tax to real estate investment trust, an exemption of the transmission tax, which represents the six between the 6 and the 10% of the value. And also the rent contract was reduced to just three years. So the protection of the tenant was almost suppressed. And it's very important also the creation of a bad bank. The European Union gave other loan of 52 billion to Shared, the bad bank, a Spanish bank is named Shared. And its mandate is to acquire and dispose of the assets that are transferred by credit institutions. And in this way, the bad bank, Shared, acquired 106 billion of non performing loans from banks. But the state, the Spanish state, is responsible for the debt of the 52 billion of Chalet with the European Union. And in spite of having sold the most part of its assets to investment funds, the Spanish state is still responsible for 40 billion of the Chalet debt, and at least 300,000 units have been sold, mostly to investment funds. And the total cost of the Spanish bailout is around 150 billion, which means 32,000 euros per inhabitant. So in spite of that, the houses of the rescue banks were sold to investment banks with very low investment funds with very low prices. 
and the public housing stock only represents a proportion of the 2.7% of the total. In 2018, there were 62,000 evictions. Why? Because of the dramatic increase of rents between this period, 2015-2019. The Blackstone or Lone Star Cerberus Texas Pacific Group have acquired this amount, gigantic amount of housing in Spain, big, uh, which came from, came from the rescue banks. Why? Because of the strong political and corruption links of Spanish politics and economic power structure. In this sense, Wall Street has used its political influence to design a model of housing that allows the financier to have a free hand to benefit from housing. How? Firstly, designing a recuperation model of the crisis which shares the losses to the public and deliver the housing to the investment funds. Secondly, acquiring gigantic amounts of housing profiting from political ties. And thirdly, paying no significant taxes for their benefits. We are going to explain here a real operation, the operation of Cerberus, the operation Divarian. Cerberus was founded in 1992 in New York. Now it managed more than 30 billion of dollars. And this company has really close links with the Republican Party and the federal government of the United States. It is a limited partnership to protect information. We can say that Cerberus is an organization obsessed with secrecy to avoid public attention. Once its CEO said that the said the CEO of Cerberus, Stephen Feinberg, said that if anyone at Cerberus has his picture in the paper and a picture of his apartment, we will do more than fight that person. We will kill them. The jail sentence will be worth it. So we can say that it's a secretive organization. Stephen Feinberg, the co-founder of Cerberus, probably owns a majority in the firm. But there is a strong confusion between Cerberus and Feinberg assets. Feinberg served on the Economic Advisory Council during Donald Trump's presidential campaign in 2016, and he donated nearly $1.5 million of dollars to Trump's campaign. He was designed by Trump to lead the President's Intelligence Advisory Board in 2018. This board has access to U.S. state secrets and provide assessments about the quality, quantity, and adequacy of the intelligence activities. Cerberus uh, contracted prominent Republican politicians. That's the case of Dan Quayle. Dan Quayle was the vice president of the US from 1989 to 1993. In spite of his confessed lack of business experience, he joined Cerberus and now he's the chairman of global investments at Cerberus. It is the same case as John Snow. John Snow was the secretary of the Three American Treasure. This is the main political church of the American administration in relation with economy. In the, this church, designed the economic and tax policy in the United States between, and he designed John Snow it between 2003 and 2006. And now he's the co-chairman of Cerberus. Both of them intervene in the NAMA Operation Project Eagle. NAMA is the Bad Bank of Ireland. NAMA means the National Asset Management Agency. And this company, created by the State of Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, sold its assets, its portfolio in Northern Ireland in the Project Eagle for 1.2 billion to Cerberus. But this operation has been very polemic. Why? Because both John Snow and Dan Quayle met with the main authorities of the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland in the eve of the bid. In this sense, John Snow met secretively with the Ministry of Finance of the Republic of Ireland, Michael Lunan, and Dan Quayle met with the co-president of the Northern Ireland, Peter Robinson. It has been an extremely profitable operation for Cerberus, which has earned hundreds of millions in very few time. But uh, one year after it appeared a payment 
of 7 million pounds in the Isle of Man connected to this operation and the National Crime Agency of United Kingdom is currently researching, investigating this payment because it is related to the Project Eagle and it could be a bribe. So it has been a very polemic operation. And we have to say also that that for Obama bailout, Cerberus would have disappeared in 2009. In, Cerber in 2008, Cerberus bought 80% of Daimler Chrysler for 7 billion. And one year after, its value was just 1 billion. So Cerberus needed and required an ask for the bailout of Obama. And Cerberus exists because of that bailout. And Cerberus also has <clears throat> ideological investments such as the Freedom Group. It is the main gun holding in the United States and it's not very profitable. Why? Because we are in a vicious cycle and consumerism doesn't work well anymore. So Cerberus decided to move to, move, to profit its political links and is the mill through its company, DynCorp, uh, obtain more than three billion of dollars in annual revenue from the US federal government and the Ministry of Defense. And also they decided to move to invest in basic needs such as housing. The first investment in Europe it was the um, in 2004 they bought the GSW Immobilian AG company of Berlin. Uh, along with you, Goldman Sachs, they bought this company and they sold it in 2011. Why they decided to solve it? Because they decided to, to move to European peripheral countries. Why? Because we have said before, banks assume an astonishing quantity of housing which came from evictions or indebted developers. These banks needed desperately capital and there was also the creation of bad banks after the public bailout. And there are obligations to sell after Basel III and before 2019 to fulfill the capital requirements. And the investment funds receive enormous political facilities such as tax avoidance and the regulation of the rent market. We can say that the European and Spanish or Iran institutions roll the red carpet for these Wall Street investment funds. In this sense, Cerberus has acquired over 400,000 pieces of real estate in Europe in these years. <clears throat> the money from Cerberus. Cerberus create funds in tax havens and the investors in these funds are the pension funds, the sovereign funds or the high net worth individuals also known as the 1%. So they create a fund in the tax haven and people invest in that funds. <clears throat> Cerberus landed in Spain in 2011, when the Popular Party, the Red Wing Party of Spain, won the general elections. And they landed in Spain, and the first thing they did was contract a person with political links. It was the case of the son of José María Aznar, with close links to the Republican Party. You remember the invasion of Iraq, he was a member of the Triangle of the Authorities, along with George Bush and Tony Blair. <clears throat> so Cerberus uh, contracted the son of Aznar and appointed him as chairman of the company created by Cerberus, Aya, to invest in the real estate assets of Spain. And Cerberus also appointed the best friend of Aznar as president of this company. So this company, without previous experience in Spain, received the biggest contract of the Spanish bad bank and they managed 40 billion of euros in real estate properties. In this way, they received 100 million of euros every year in revenues and after they have a strong position in the Spanish market. They profit this position to invest in the Spanish real estate market and um, in 2018, they agreed with a, a Spanish bank, the Banco Bilbao, acquiring its real estate assets. A um, big quantity of that assets came from the bailout of Caixa Catalunya, a former semi-public 
savings bank located in Barcelona. So this operation has a strong um, implication on the city of Barcelona, a strong impact on the city of Barcelona. How did they structure this operation? We see here that it is Cerberus Capital Management in New York and they create companies in Netherlands to extract all this operation. But these companies have no workers. So what's the purpose of these companies? These companies, its purpose is the tax avoidance and structure the operation. The Cerberus invested 200 and 30 million of capital from tax havens in Promontoria 34 Cooperative, a Netherlands company. And this company invested the same quantity in Promontoria Holding 207. Why? Because cooperatives are not subjected to withhold, to dividend withholding tax. That's the reason that they use this uh, form, this legal form to, to invest, the Cooperative of Netherlands. And after the Promontoria Holding 207 invested the same quantity of capital in Promontoria Holding 208. Why? Because this company received a loan of 450 million from a fund created by Cerberus, possibly Cerberus Institutional Real Estate Partners, which was created in the Delaware. Here we see that Cerberus received 670 million. They had 670 million to invest in this operation. We see that the real estate investment funds are between the most profitable from Cerberus. So they had 670 million, but they needed 1.65 billion more to buy the Banco Bilbao assets. So what did they do? They borrow a loan. The Deutsche Bank, a Baba Group, and Morgan Stanley borrowed money from the European Central Bank, paying interest close to 0%. And after these banks lend the money to Cerberus to acquire the real estate assets of Banco Bilbao, they lend 1.65 million. And Cerberus has to pay an interest to the, to the banks and pledge the assets which are in the company, the Varian property, the Varian propiedad, plus the Varian as collateral to the bank. So if Cerberus fail to give back, to pay the loan, he will to deliver the Varian property as collateral. And now, with the coronavirus situation, it is quite likely to happen this kind of situation because this uh, operation was based on expectations of rent increase, which is not going to happen after the coronavirus crisis. So uh, the, the Promontoria Marina paid 2.3 billion to Banco Bilbao for the real estate assets, which are 60,000 60, real estate units. And uh, after uh, the Banco Bilbao gave 0 0.45 um, uh, 450 billion of euros, 450 million of euros to, Promont to Promontoria Marina, they have the possibility to, to lend that money to Cerberus to buy its own assets. But here we see that uh, there are special features in Baba Group. Baba Group uh, was a bank of Cerberus. In 2006, Cerberus bought Babak, an Austrian bank, an important Austrian bank, for 3 billion. And in 2017, it became a listed company whose largest shareholder was still Cerberus. Um, so Cerberus had used its own bank to finance the operation. And after it, Cerberus sold the most part of its estate in Babak. And they also used Deutsche Bank, because in 2017, Feinberg bought 3% of Deutsche Bank and is among the biggest shareholders of the company. So Cerberus used Deutsche Bank to finance the operation Divarian. And also they used Deutsche Bank to finance, to buy the real estate portfolio of uh, the second Barcelonian bank, Banco Sabadell, in an operation structured in the same way as Divarian. They borrow money from Deutsche Bank. So Cerberus have become the main landlord of the city of Barcelona using its own banks and the facilities provided by the European Central Bank. 
So here we see a scheme of the operation. This is a resume. And the variant property pays a management fee to IR real estate to the manager of Cerberus in Spain, which shares the same structure than the operation the variant. They use Netherlands, they use cooperatives to not pay company tax. And after they go to tax havens. And if we see the advisors of Aja Real Estate, which is the main company of Cerberus in Spain, we see here the president, former president, the friend of Aznar, his son, and we also see a prominent politician, Case Mas. Who is Case Mas? Case Mas was a worker of the Ministry of Finance of Netherlands between 1976 and 1992. And he was treasurer general from 1986 to 1992, and is considered one of the main architects of the Euro and the Treaty of Maastricht. And after the Treaty of Maastricht, he left the public sector and entered in ING Group as a member of the executive board. And in 1996, he was appointed as chief financial officer. And he wrote, and he held the role of chief of the risk officer during his time in at ING. He resigned as chief financial officer of ING Group in 2007 and one year after ING received a bailout of 10 billion from that government, 10 billion of euros. And he was the main responsible of the ING failure as chief risk officer until 2007. However, in 2012, Mas manifested that the problem of the crisis was a problem of the governments. They have too much deficit, too much debt, and that is the realism. The euro is a stable currency. There is no inflation, and that was exactly what we wanted. He is also a prominent lobbyist. He was the vice chairman of the Institute of International Finance, which is the organization which mirrors the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision and sway the regulations of Basel. And he was also a member of the Trilateral Commission. We have to say that uh, Cerberus started to operate in Europe through Cerberus Global Investment in 2004. You remember the, when the Cerberus bought the GSW Immobilium from Berlin. And this is the parent company of 23 holding companies of Cerberus. Um, in 2008, Kate Mas joined Cerberus and currently he is the director of Cerberus Global Investments and he called board positions in other companies linked to Cerberus such as Babac. Um, we see that profit distributions by a cooperative are subjected to dividend withholding tax but only if it concerns a qualifying tax abuse structure. But the Dutch government has not considered the structure of Cerberus in Netherlands as a qualifying tax abuse structure. And we have to say that in 2007, Case Mass was made an officer of the Order of Orange by Queen Beatrice of Netherlands. The honor was presented by Wouter Boss, then the Minister of Finance of Netherlands. Case Mass usually talks about politicians, pretending he was not a politician. However, he embodies the secretive, non-elected people and institutions that pull the strings of the political power. Progressive tax regimes have all but disappeared because of tax havens, so that the only way to fulfill the stability politics imposed by European Union is reducing social rights, such as housing. This political frame necessarily leads to an increase of inequality and social unrest. And we have to say here that we are going to face difficult times because of coronavirus. And this company probably will ask for money to the European institutions. Why? Because its operation, its operation in Barcelona was based of expectations, expectations of exploiting the people of Barcelona, rising their rents more than 56% in just four years. But as a, the Feinberg, the CEO Cerberus said once that we, Cerberus, try to hide religiously. So I think that activists must try to disclose religiously the revolving doors which are behind 
this situation, this political abuse. So I hope you like it. Thank you very much.